Okay, so let's keep on going through this. So how can we increase the efficiency of the ranking cycle? Now, the basic idea behind all modifications for trying to increase thermal efficiency is usually about the same. We can increase the average temperature at which heat is transferred to the working fluid, or we can decrease the average temperature at which heat is rejected from the working fluid. So one of these two things is usually how we go about it. Now we, we do have some issues with this. We do have some issues with this when it comes to a vapor cycle. So let's talk about it. So can we lower the condenser pressure? So if we lower the condenser pressure, yes, we do have an increase in the net work. That's what you're seeing right here. This new extra area is great, it works fantastic. There is an issue though. The more I lower that condenser pressure, you notice that this point right here, state four, begins to move further and further away from the saturated vapor line. So when I lower the condenser pressure, I'm going to increase the moisture content of the steam. So I have to make sure that one, I'm okay with my um, turbine wearing out and I'm not going too low to the point where I'm going to have issues. Another thing is that temperature is being dropped by having my pressure go down. Like I have to have a lower pressure for this to happen. Um, and so you're like, okay, well, can it go below atmospheric? The answer is yes, yes. Honestly, most steam power plants are well below atmospheric pressure. So yeah, we can go below atmospheric. Um, we're not gonna go to vacuum, but <clears throat> we can go below atmospheric. The big thing for us is we have to be careful about the quality, okay? Quality is the issue here because X4 prime is much or is less than the quality of state four. So this is one thing we can do. You lower the condenser pressure, you're going to increase the amount of work that you've done and therefore your thermal efficiency. Why the moisture content matter? Because remember, if you've got a fan and it's spinning really fast and it smacks into a water molecule, that water molecule can dent it, break it, cause it to crack, and eventually cause it to completely break down. I always like to tell people that, like, you know, if you're talking about um, turbines, they're spending ridiculously fast. And it's kind of at that point when you have water droplets in there, like throwing sand into it, because the water droplets aren't going to be that hard compared to um, because of how fast the fan blades are moving. Okay, so one side we decrease the pressure so we can decrease the temperature. On the other side, we can simply have higher temperatures. So let's just really superheat that steam. So we can do that. And this seems to have a lot of good side effects because if you look at it, I went from 0.3 to three primes, I'm at hotter. This is all increased work, that's fantastic. And even our quality got better. So 10 out of 10, this is what we should do. Let's just infinitely increase that temperature way up to here. <clears throat> but we're gonna have some issues here. Now these are from a different aspect because yes, when I increase the temperature, it's going to make it better. However, um, there it is. We have to care about metallurgical considerations. Simply put, things are going to melt. Like, if I'm putting things into a turbine, I can't make that vapor too hot. Otherwise, the turbine is going to fail, um, possibly disastrously. So for us, typically highest steam temperature we can have is around 620 degrees Celsius. And this is why we care so much about developing new alloys, because the better our alloy is, the better we can, um, the higher the temperatures we can go, and the better our performance will be. Um, if you're old enough, you might have heard of a ceramic engine. This is for your car, not for a turbine. It was this idea that ceramics can take really, really high temperatures. And so if we made a ceramic engine, well, we could have that super high temperature and therefore a very efficient engine. And it was true. The thing is, ceramics are also very, very brittle. You know, think of a, a vase. Ceramic vase, you drop it, it cracks. And so if I get into a wreck, well, my engine might very easily crack. So in that way, it's got some issues. But I might have hopes for the future that we'll develop some sort of super ceramic and they'll make a return. Be nice. Okay, now another thing we can do is we can increase the boiler pressure because it's also going to increase my um, upper temperature. So when I do that, there's a couple of things that happen. So I've increased my boiler pressure. 
remember that I have some max temperature, so even if I wanted to, I can't just indiscriminately increase this temperature. So when I increase my boiler pressure, I'm going to hit that same temperature, and because I'm hitting the same temperature, I have a higher pressure, it's going to be further to the left. And that means that my quality of my steam is going to decrease. So I'm going to have a lower quality steam. I'm also going to lose this hot work while gaining this work. So I will get some work out of this. I will have a net increase in the work, but there are some side effects to this. So for each of these different aspects, oops, went too far. For each of these different aspects, there are both pros and cons to how I can improve this cycle. So I think that will do it for this time. So thank you all so much, and I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.